you just decided to call it Alice in Chains this time, right? Yeah, we basically couldn't think of anything else to call it. <laughs> <laughs> there are days like that, right? I mean, it's true. Alice in Chains' self-titled album is the third studio album from the band and would be the final studio album the band would make with frontman Lane Staley as he would pass away in April of 2002. Recorded between April and August of 1995 at Bad Animal Studio in Seattle, Washington, the record would go on to be released in November later that year. The album is 12 tracks of awesome Alice in Chains rock with heavy hitters such as Grind and Again being mixed in with the band showing its lighter side with tracks like Heaven Beside You and Over Now. Despite the band opting not to tour behind the release of the Alice in Chains record, the album debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 and stayed on the chart for 46 weeks. The tracks Grind, Heaven Beside You and Again were released as singles from the album. Grind and Again were nominated for the Grammy Award for Best Hard Rock Performance. The album received double platinum certification and has gone on to sell over 3 million copies worldwide. This record was just, it was a culmination of, you know, a lot, a lot of time thinking of, you know, thinking, doing things on our own and getting back together and, and realizing that it's just as good, if not better, than it ever was, you know, musically. And yeah, it's 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 cool. I mean, and and this record also is a is a record of itself. There's like a ton of stuff that you know, a lot of lyrical shit that you know, where stuff happened daily. You know, just creep their ways into into the songs. So the lyric on that first song, "Grind," you know, kind of sets the tone for the record. You know, it's like you know, don't count me out, mother. You know, till I'm out. You know, because I'll get up and kick your ass <laughs> when you're least expecting it. You know. After the release of 1994's Jar of Flies, Lane Staley entered rehab and Alice in Chains went on hiatus. It was at this time that Staley joined the grunge supergroup Mad Season. In January of 1995, Cantrell, bassist Mike Inez, and drummer Sean Kinney began jamming on Cantrell's material. In the spring of 95, Staley was invited back to join the band. In April, Alice in Chains entered Bad Animal Studio in Seattle with producer Toby Wright, who had previously worked with Corrosion of Conformity and Slayer. Few of the songs on the album had been written before the sessions began, so Cantrell's material was used as a starting point. The band would then give the demo tapes to Staley so he could write the lyrics. The album was finished in August of 95, Cantrell said, it was often depressing and getting it done felt like pulling hair out, but it was the f***ing coolest thing and I'm glad to have gone through it. I will cherish the memory forever, while Staley added, I'll cherish it forever too, just because this one I can remember doing. With the exception of Grind, Heaven Beside You, and Over Now, the lyrics are written entirely by Staley. Staley said, I just wrote down whatever was on my mind, so a lot of the lyrics are really loose. There's no huge, deep message in any of the songs. It was just what was going on in my head right then. We had good times, and we had bad times. We recorded a few months of being human. As with anyone's life, or or, you know, with time, you just move on to other things. And, you know, there other things were, were going on during the writing of this record. And I think uh, just the, the friction and the energy and the outside pecking at, <laughs> at us to get going and get moving on this record gave us the inspiration to kind of lash out and in a proper way. We kept this record really really close to home, really close to the, the time and, and the, the experiences and, and what we were feeling, you know. We made the record in four months and I think all those songs were just kind of a whirlwind of emotions that happened during the, the making of that record, you know. Although bassist Mike Inez had made his debut with the band on 1994's Jar of Flies, this record was his first studio album with the band, as he had replaced former bassist Mike Starr, who played on Chain's previous studio album, Dirt. Uh, I like them all. I like um, Heaven Beside You was really 
cool and and different. You know, all the songs sound different from each other on this record. I like uh, I like again and grind. Mm. I like that song. There's a song called So Close. It's really cool and yeah, they all just sound different. You know, it was uh, we didn't know what was going to end up. We had this this sheet in the studio of just all the different ideas with all the working titles on them. You know, I think uh, we picked the best of the the, the, the creme de la creme. One of the big hits off the album, Heaven Beside You, was written by Ken Trell after the end of a seven-year relationship with his girlfriend. Commenting on Over Now, Ken Trell said of the song, a lot of deep shit in there, a big epic number. Plus, you can get away with a hugely long two near the end of a record. Reflecting on the album in a 2018 interview, Ken Trell said, there's a sadness to that record. It's the sound of a band falling apart. It was our last studio record to that point. It's a beautiful record, but it's sad too. It's a little more exploratory, a little bit more meandering. It's not as crafted as the rest of our records were. You know, even, even a song that, uh, you know, one of us, um, in particular the grind that I wrote, uh, you know, the idea was a good idea. It's a good song, but uh, Lane and Sean and Mike and myself, when we get together, uh, there's like a chemistry that it, I mean it's something that you can't really put your finger on but it just it puts that stuff over the top and it makes it better than you could ever imagine it would be in the first place and it's really cool you guys do have a great like something me. something I'm very thankful for the mockumentary the Nona tapes was made to promote the album it featured Jerry Cantrell disguised as a female journalist named Nona interviewing his bandmates playing fictionalized versions of themselves during a car ride in Seattle Allison Chain's record label Columbia did not like the Nona tapes at first and told the band they had wasted their money doing it. However, it became a cult hit and Columbia decided to sell it, but the band was against that. The Nona tapes, however, were eventually released on VHS in December of 1995. The album is also known informally as Tripod or The Dog Album due to a three-legged dog on the front cover. And there was also a picture of Frank Lantini on the back cover. He was a sideshow performer who toured with numerous circuses and had three legs. The image of the dog on the cover was inspired by a three-legged dog named Tripod that used to terrorize drummer Sean Kinney and chase him around during his paperwork duty when he was a kid. Kinney also designed the artwork for the album. Contrary to rumor, the dog on the front cover did not belong to Jerry Cantrell. Cantrell has said in interviews that he did not know the owner of the dog. But let's talk about it. You got the dog that's on the cover of the album there. <laughs> you got a story about that dog. Let's yeah, tell everybody actually, about actually uh, Sean did most of the artwork on the record and uh, did a great job. I think it's the best packaging we found on any record, period. And uh, it's really hard to make it look kind of neat and artistic on a small little piece of plastic. I still miss that plastic. Yeah, the big album. I still miss the album. Yeah, the but uh, uh, anyway, he, he was terrorized by this three-legged dog in his neighborhood called Tripod. And, and, it's uh, a great name, Tripod. He used to chase him around on his paper route, I guess. And, and uh, he used to be a pretty, pretty gnarly dog to deal with and stuff. But uh, that's, that's where we get the idea for the album cover anyway. And it fits in for a lot of reasons. So Alice in Chains' self-titled 1995 record, the final studio album the band would do with Lane Staley, and it's epic. It's a really awesome record. It may not have been as commercially successful as their previous album, Dirt. However, this thing stands alone just as a total work of art, in my opinion. It definitely has a different vibe going on from Chain's first studio albums, Facelift and Dirt. This one is just slightly more modernized, in my opinion, is the way I would put it kind of stands apart from Facelift and Dirt a bit. But this is a totally awesome album. Obviously, you've got your big hits on there with Grind, Heaven Beside You, and again, totally awesome songs. And then you've got really cool tracks like Brush Away, Sludge Factory, and Head Creeps. Lane sings really well on this album. He's got a real cool style going on, just as he does on all the Alice in Chains records, but it's here in spades. That chorus on God Am, just so cool the way he sings it. The track, So Close, another cool track. And continuing towards the end of the album, you've got the epic frogs with that totally cool end section to the song. 
with Lane using real cool effects on his voice works so well. And of course, Over Now, that's a really cool song. They did a really great version of that on their Unplugged album. Another track on the album where Jerry Cantrell does the lead vocals and a really good song, solid song there with Over Now. So as I mentioned before, this album definitely has a slightly different vibe from Dirt and Facelift. They were done in 90 and 92 and this one in 95, so it just kind of is slightly more modernized. And you just kind of have a different vibe going on. It's a pity that they just didn't release more albums. Of course, we all know what happened in the end, but these guys always produce solid records. And this album is right up there for me for Alice in Chains. One of their best, no doubt about it. Facelift and Dirt had those big hit songs from Alice in Chains, like with Man in the Box and Wood and stuff like that. But this one may not have had that huge standout hit, don't get me wrong, it still had some great hit songs on it. But as an album altogether, it's just one whole great piece of art, I would say. Sounds really awesome. Cool vibe and very cool songs. So there you go guys, that's how I see Alice in Chains' self-titled 1995 album. A really awesome album, want to know what you guys think about it in the comment section below, and we're going to catch you next time here on Dude Man Productions. My intentions are, are not um, aimed in that direction. I mean, as, as far as I'm concerned, we'll make another record, and if that one goes well, we'll make another one after that. You know, if we start putting out shitty records, I say, let's do something else. But as long as we're putting out records that that we like and, and other people like, um, you know, I, I see no reason to stop making records, you know.